I started writing, I started writing formalistically. I taught myself to write formalistically and to write uh, haikus, mm -hmm. tankas, uh, sonnets, uh, villanelles, uh, sestinas. That's the way I thought, because I, I didn't study poetry with anybody. So I thought the best way to do it was to uh, go through the farms. And then I figured that would teach me. I didn't know if that, you know, and that's what I did until I realized that that was not the answer either. Uh, I had to find my voice someplace else. So it's always been uh, a poetry in pursuit of a voice where I could settle and kind of, you know, be there. But that has not worked either because I've always tried, to, as I grow older, my voice changes and my concerns change and uh, what I think is important changes mm -hmm. in a way, you know. The sense of motion itself. Oh yeah. Is that is that something that motion inspires you? Yeah, motion and speed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we're we're moving like uh, again music and motion. The whole idea of of of, of moving and motion and moving. That's what I look at it. I look at it as as uh, uh, like music. Music is very important to me. Mm -hmm. Very important to me. More so than. Uh, a lot of people talk to me about, oh, you're hanging with musicians, you don't hang with a lot of poets, you don't hang with a lot of... I, well, I basically hang with, with painters yeah. and, 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 and musicians, you know, because they're, they're, the whole idea of motion is very important to musicians and to great painters. Yeah. You know, the whole, whole thing of moving forward, moving. Picasso, mm -hmm. you look at Picasso's paintings, mm -hmm. you, you, look at, you look at Miles Davis as a musician, yeah. it's about motion, yeah. it's about motion, it's about moving. It's about moving to different things. And in order to go someplace, you have to move mm -hmm. to go there. So everything for me is about motion. The poetry is about motion. It's about, uh, it's, it's about how it moves, how, how the poems move and the language moves. Uh, it's trying to bring together all of these metaphors and images and that are really disparate in a way, you know? So it is, a, it is about all of that. kind of players once in a lifetime and why what makes them great is about attitude it's about skill it's like how do you make a great poem you make a great poem by structure you know it's the way you structure something you know you put it together it's the structure of it yeah. and it's and it's the way it's put together yeah. you know all the parts of a great basketball player is built just like that um, a great basketball player can dribble mm -hmm. they can jump they're quick, mm -hmm. they have the great shot, mm -hmm. you know, they mm -hmm. have intelligence, mm -hmm. they know when to shoot, when not to shoot, they can shoot with both hands, they can shoot with both hands, they can dribble with both hands, they can beat you off the dribble. <laughs> you know, some people who, you know, they need a screen, they need a screen to score. They need somebody to block this player so you can shoot the jump shot. Oh, yeah. Great players don't need screens. They don't need screens. They can beat you, they can beat two people. They can beat, they can beat you off the dribble and they can split you dunk on you, they can shoot the long jump, they can do whatever they want to you. So I think that poetry should be that way. I think it's very important that poetry and poets are in that realm, you know, where you can, so I'm talking not them as a personality, whether they're nice looking, whether they're black or they're white, or the way they look, I'm talking about them, what they do, mm -hmm. what they do, you know, how they do it. And that's very important. The same thing is true with a painter. It's not, you know, it's about how you paint, how you put the painting together, how you put it together. A musician in Miles Davis, how do you take the music and put it together? How do you do that? You know, how do you put, how do you change the way the music is, is set up? You know, Miles Davis changed the course of music five, six times. Five or six times. Not many people have done that. Yeah. You know, and, you, and when you talk to other musicians, all these, I mean, were they black, white, or I met, I've met so many musicians because I wrote those two books on Miles. Oh, yeah. I've met so many artists because I wrote those books on Miles Davis. They come up to me and they say, oh, Miles Davis was my hero. He was mine too. Innovation for me is very important. 
uh, innovation in, I mean, you know, uh, you know, in poetry. How is it, how can you discover new ways to write poetry? How can you discover new ways to construct language and syntax? Yeah. How can you discover new ways to look at metaphors uh, and to create new metaphors in a way, uh, in a complex, modern, uh, rapidly changing world? Mm. How can you put all of that together? I live on a street in Harlem here. If you, in the summertime, you open up the windows, put, you know, the windows open, and what you hear, you can hear like six or seven different languages. Mm -hmm. You hear Seneg Senegalese, mm -hmm. you, hear, you hear French, you hear uh, the Senegalese native language, you hear Puerto Ricans, you hear Puerto Rican, you hear the, 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 the Spanglish, you hear Cubans, you hear Malians, you hear Europeans, you hear African Americans, all on this little street. You hear Chinese, mm -hmm. You know, you hear Koreans, all in within maybe a half an hour. You can hear all of these languages floating up to my window. You know, so it's kind of remarkable. It's like a, it's like the world, and, and a, <laughs> a little, you know, it's like a, a little world on this one street. And you hear all of this every day. Yeah. When you walk, I walk this block to the subway. I hear all of these different languages being spoken. You know, and one day I heard, I heard this Russian. I said, ah. That's a different. That's a different sign. It was a Russian. It was a Russian. It was a group of Russian people out here, you know. And you hear all of that uh, right on this one block, right around here. They all go to that church across the street. A lot of French, a lot of Russians, a lot of people from Europe, a lot of people from all around the United States, and you know, you hear all kinds of different things. So for me, um, where I live now. It is a very, very great place to live because yeah. uh, I can feed off all of that mm -hmm. and the food and the cuisine and the dress styles and, and the way they are, the attitudes, the cultural attitudes. Uh, it's wonderful to look at uh, the, the Senegalese and, and the, uh, you, you see a bunch of, bunch of French tourists in the Senegalese and you see African Americans, you see Russians, you see Chinese all mixed together walking around here and it's normal. It's just normal. Nobody thinks nothing. Nobody thinks like, what are these people doing in our neighborhood? What are they think? What are they doing here? You know, nobody thinks about that. We say, "How are you doing?" Well, bonjour, blah blah blah. It's like that. And I think the world should be like that. It should be welcoming, in a way. I think that's important. But I think also that poetry has to change to be able to embrace all of that. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't. I mean, as much as I love some things, it has to be able to move forward and enter modern era in a way. I don't know how that is. Yeah. I don't know how you do that, but uh, you know, I'm trying to do it.